When people talk about JavaScript on the back end, they usually refer to Node.js. Node.js is a platform where you can write JavaScript code on the back end or the server side rather than the client side. Other languages you might use on the server side or back end are C Sharp, Python, and Java, which is my favorite. Java is not JavaScript. They are different languages. Specifically, Java is strongly typed, whereas JavaScript does not. But what does it mean to be strongly typed? It means you have to give each piece of data a data type, and you have to define that data type. Sometimes it's built in with integer or double, and other times you might need a custom type. In that case, you'd probably create an object, and each item in the object also has its own type. When a language is weakly typed or does not have this strong typing like JavaScript, not every piece of data needs a type. You don't have to define a type for every piece of data. You can simply create the variable and assign it a value as needed. Now the line between strongly typed and weakly typed can be a little blurred, but Java and JavaScript are on separate ends of that spectrum. Many software engineers like working with a strongly typed language because the data is more predictable you know certain attributes should be available for certain objects. You're not just guessing what's available with a piece of data or what operations you can do on that data. It's all defined. With weakly typed, it's less predictable what that data might be because it hasn't been classified with a specific type. Now to solve for this, TypeScript was created. TypeScript allows you to add data types to your JavaScript code. It's technically its own language, but it builds on JavaScript. Using this can help you develop code that is a little bit more readable than your typical JavaScript, where you're inferring what data you're working with. And this is good. It makes it easier to contribute to the code base and add on new features. However, the types are optional. You don't have to define a type for every single piece of data you work with, but TypeScript gives you the ability to do that. So it's on the developer to actually use the tools that TypeScript is giving you. If you don't wanna give a type to a certain piece of data, you can use the any type. The any type is a little bit of syntactic sugar. You're defining a type, but you're letting it be any type of data. You're classifying it as anything. Now what happens is what if you make everything in any type? You're really just writing JavaScript where you have a couple extra innies in there. Sure, you have the ability to write types later, but it can be really easy to just use the any type for everything, get it running, and not create the custom types that you need in order to classify your data. And that would be the result of lazy development. Sure, it works, but is it maintainable? And it's easy to write code that's not maintainable with no JS. You just use the any type. To give another example, we have this Lego toy. Now, I want my code to be maintainable just like this Lego toy. And what it means to be maintainable is if I have this new feature, it should be really easy to put on there and not break anything. And now I'm going to add another feature and hopefully nothing will break. Now, if you do not use types, what can happen is it becomes a lot harder to add your new feature. You add things and it's just continuously broken. You end up making a bigger mess than what you started with. Now you have all of these undefined things in your code and your space Lego can no longer go to space. So why is using the any type bad? Well, imagine you have to add a function where data is passed in that is of the any type. And this data is really in the form of an object. It has attributes, and you really don't know what those attributes are unless you run the code and retrieve the data from the service, and you dynamically figure out the attributes that way. You can't just look at the type, which is why we have data types, to see what's available with this object. Now, as a part of this function, you could add a type to this data and you could clean up some of the things that were initially there as the any type and create the new type, assign it to the code that was already there and then use it in the code you're creating. But you're probably not gonna do that. You're probably gonna continue to use the any type so it matches the rest of the code base. As a result of this, you're creating even more obscurity in the data you're using. It seems a little weird that you have to run the code in order to understand what type of data is available to you. However, because it 
it's easy to create something pretty complex with JavaScript, many gravitate towards it. With Node.js and JavaScript, it's easier for errors and cases to slip through the cracks. It's also easier for developers to write bad code, even if they don't want to. For example, let's say you have something like this. You're retrieving data from this membership service with the get member info function. The data that should be returned is a data object with a membership object inside of it. And this matches what's in the JSON. Now let's say you get an error from the membership service. Now the data variable will be undefined and this will cause an issue you because you're accessing membership from something that's undefined. But let's say you get your membership. Now the membership variable is of type any. So now you're going to access attributes of an object that is not strongly typed. This can get you into some pretty sticky situations because if you access the wrong attribute of an object, it will be undefined. You don't have the code completion or the strong typedness to help you out. Given all of this, it's it's important to remember that you can write bad code in any language. I define bad code as code that's overly complex for a simple operation, or code that is not maintainable, or code that doesn't follow any pattern. Most of coding is actually about pattern matching. The code base already exists and you're contributing to it. Now, some languages make it easier to write bad code and others make it harder. They make it harder by requiring data types and requiring certain standards so that the code you write follows a pattern. Node.js and JavaScript remove the reins, remove a lot of those bounds, and you're coding in the wild, wild west. It makes it a lot easier to write bad code when you don't have laws or rules. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy coding.